This is Twit. Ferret AI. <laughs> this is Apple's new AI model that's that's designed to make sense out of app screens. Ferret UI, yeah. Ferret UI. What yeah. the what? I don't. This is well, this is interesting. This is this is a, a tech paper, the a research paper that got published yesterday by uh, by Apple, and it's interesting. It is a uh, it is an AI system that is designed specifically on interpreting what's on the screen of a of a device. What is the user interface? And so it's you. It starts off with things as simple as. Uh, what is it? What is the text that's in this part of the screen? Or show me where there is a button on this. But it goes as far as like showing the, the the paper has a lot of screenshots of what it does. Where you're thinking about if it if you want to, an AI or even just a script to control an app, you're thinking about something like shortcuts or Apple Script or uh, or workflows where there is an infrastructure built in where the app can publish to uh, an API. Here are functions that we can that this app can support. Here's how you can call it from an outside app this ai can simply understand what the interface what interface is going on on a screen right now and what the purpose of it is i mean, i'm kind of just given the conversation we were having earlier i'm just kind of interested to hear like what shelly would have to say about this like there's what there's oh, one of the actually that that's have, a good point one, yeah one, the, one of the demonstrations they have is yeah like uh, what's uh, asking the ai what's the function of this screen and it's, it's showing a screen that's uh, just simply like a uh, uh, it's a a uh, podcast app and ferret ui can explain the screens for a podcast application where users can browse and play new and notable podcasts with options to play download and search for specific podcasts another screen is here is the product page for uh, airpods pro and you ask the the in the in the paper the the ai is asked how do i purchase airpods pro and it comes immediately back you can do that by tapping on the buy button on the screen and I'll be darned. There's a there is a button called uh, called buy. So for navi for breaking everything down onto what the button what is on the screen. What are is there is there a camera button on the screen? And doesn't have to know necessarily. There's a button that's labeled ca camera inside an API. It says it knows what a camera button looks like. It also has lots of goodies where it can knowing that a screen might be scrollable and it might have cut off like the bottom part of a piece of text. It can kind of figure out what that text is. It makes the point that there's a lot of UI elements. They're just so, so tiny that you can't via conventional like image image search find out what this button is. You have to essentially use AI tools to basically add more pixels to it before you can break it out. It's a very it's it's not a very, very long read at all. And the implications of what it can do, particularly in the case of being able to hold up a hold up a, your, your hold up a phone and say, uh, to say to a, a mail client, or excuse me, say to a, a, a virtual assistant, I want to send an email to eight different people, and I want each one to get a different photo. And for this AI to be able to figure out, here is what the you, the, the control for this uh, this. Uh, Here's what the interface with this, this mail system is like. Here is the button that needs to be virtually pushed in order to add an attachment. Here is the content that this person is asking for on this email that wants to be cut, pasted, and modified. Uh, and the and the and the last thing is that this is not just Apple stuff. It also is using examples from like uh, Android screenshots that has been fed with tens of thousands of iOS and Android screenshots and shows places where it worked, places where it didn't work. But it's a very, very interesting development. Well, and ideally Siri would have this built in so you could, in effect, talk to the screen and say, Siri, press the buy button. Shelly, is this... Uh is this something you would want? It sounds like it's a it's a great extension beyond there's a feature in voiceover for iOS called screen recognition, which is supposed to account for an app where buttons are not labeled. And it's recognizes that looks like a back button because it's a left facing arrow that looks like a home button because it's a little right. picture of a house. It's hit and miss, but it is kind of useful. There are applications where there are apps where there might be some buttons labeled and not, and others not labeled and you can use screen recognition to get around them. But in a lot of cases, is if there's no labeling at all, and especially if text content is not labeled, you can't get there. So this is this is a, probably a smarter version of that. And the fact that you could customize queries. So instead of just saying, you know, I want to go back to the previous page, show me where the back button is. Uh, for example, some of the AIs that already exist for accessibility purposes will allow you to scan a bunch of text, like say you scan a food label, and instead of just bringing back the text on the food label, you say, how do I make this thing? Or does this ingredient 
in, does this uh, package contain more than 500 milligrams of sodium or whatever specific information you want that it's that's obviously from the content not from screenshots but this is the kind of extension of things that already exist that actually make and 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 the cool thing about it i think too is that once people who use it for accessibility purposes sort of get smart about what kinds of questions they can ask it can be really uh, really useful and you could you're, you're going to use it in ways that I don't even think the inventors would necessarily have thought of because you know, how do you how do you actually find that buy button if you can't see it well you have to have you know are you going to bring the cursor over to it are you going to have voiceover uh, engage in, for the moment that you need it and read it and then have uh, you know have you be able to move to it what are you going to do there are all sorts of opportunities so it, it seems really cool I think you go even a step beyond that I mean that's accessibility where you have a sc actual screen and you can query and 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 act upon it but really uh i think the future of ar may not have a screen at all like your airpods and what would be great is if an ai understood the information being presented by uh, on a user interface and could say it could act on it without you having to even query it about the user interface so yeah right. uh, i'd like to the buy your interface AirPods. is an impediment for the yeah, yeah, accessibility it's an impediment, term sometimes exactly not just for accessibility but for anybody without a screen yeah. including people who might be using uh, an, an audio based augmented reality system so to be able to say i want to buy airpods okay i'm on the apple store uh tell me a little bit about the airpods tech specs okay what's the price okay i'd like to buy it okay you know that that's the next level up beyond just a concrete description of what's on the screen and having you be able to push those buttons. I think that yeah, would be fantastic. To, and I think that's where they're headed, to be honest. Yeah. Especially the ability to, to interact with anything that's yes. on your screen, whether it, whether it's designed to, whether it's wired up to support automated control or not. Cause think, think about all the different, all the disappointment pies that you've eaten because it's like, Oh, okay. I, you know, I really, really want to automate this because I do this every single day or three, and then this, there's this one crucial step and that is not scriptable. Right. It does not, it has none of the plugins. It has nothing. And also the, even the user interface, the, the hacks you can do to basically there, there are like monkey scripts that can simply say, look for this button and act and send a mouse event to that thing like that's not the sort of th even if it does work that's not the sort of thing that the average person can do but for an ai that gets sophisticated enough in five years from now that you can simply give it a command that it's not prepared to do but it knows that okay if he wants to buy this i should check these four different stores to find out what they are maybe the inter the, the buy interface for amazon walmart.com target.com and urban outfitters directly or whatever whatever store it is directly have changed this last time that it's been checked but it can still parse this out figure out where the buy button is for this and of course maybe ask for a verification but explain exactly what it's about to do because i can understand all that it's the, the the problem with a lot of automation is simply that it works, but the amount of work you have to do to make the automation work often exceeds the amount of work you'd have to do to just do it manually to begin with, even if uh, the thing has been de has been designed so that uh, uh, so that it's 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 easy it's easy to do like from from a regular uh, regular point of view. So it's think, it's interesting. This is again this is a research paper. It's not a it's not a precis of a feature that Apple is specifically working on. It does talk specifically about your other different AIs that do this kind of sort of thing. We think that we've got a system here that works a lot better than these other three. And here's how it works. It actually uses Chat GPT for for a lot of uh, the text savviness and text awareness that it has to do. So it's a good fundamental technology. Yeah, I, I think that, that, that with AI, I think the, the natural being able to just talk to it, everything is going to be something that we expect. And I think Apple has to stay ahead of in the sense that, you know, like I use ChatGPT all the time and I was trying to figure something out. Um, so I, you know, on, on ChatGPT and I said, I need you to make me a list of 100 cities that, that are this criteria. Like I, I need it to be, you know, I want them to be the largest markets, but I want the first 20 to be the largest markets. I want the next 20 to be the largest college markets. I want the net rest of them to be, you know, and I just stacked up what the requirements are. Just gave me a hundred. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, including and, and Smallville, Gotham City. It's really, uh, no, you know, you can always it, trust it an was, AI to give you the. <laughs> no, and, and, and I, I interrogated it a little bit, but as I looked through them, I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, and, and you know, and, and told me why. Like I, I told it, tell me why you're doing that. Yeah. And so it would be like, hey, State College has it's got, you know, this Penn State in it. And this one's got the Athens, Georgia's got this one. And this one's got this. And this is where these are. And I and hope so, the AI that you're using has direct access to the Internet today. That's the key. And a lot of the new ones, including Google's own now, has access well, to Google. It, 
Yeah, and, and that kind of information isn't fast moving, you know, for for that one. Yeah. And and so, um, but but I think that the uh, I think that being able to naturally ask at things and then say, well, what about this, or take this away, or add this, or you know, and and del- you know, uh, make a file that's a tab delimited file for me, you know, those kinds of things are all things that you can just kind of ask it to do, and you get used to that. Um, and uh, and I think that that. I think Apple has to get to that point. That is the one part of AI, being able to interact with all of your software where you're not really, you know, you don't have to go figure out how you're going to search it. You know, we joke in my family that, you know, it's not what you know, it's how well you Google, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and and I think that at some point you get to a point where you start asking questions. And I think that that's where um, being able to see all the interfaces and that that type of thing means that you can interrogate the apps that already exist. Yeah. The end, yes, that's the point exactly. The end game is, Everything's an agent talking to another agent. But yeah. in the interim, we have all of this stuff that has a screen and a UI, yeah. and you need some sort of interim technology that will make it accessible to uh, to an AI. But eventually, like not too far in the future, 10, 15 years, everything will have an AI interface, and then it's just a conversation yeah. between your agent just- and theirs. Exactly the same way that we've been we've been discussing that it's not terribly useful for yes a robot can pour you can pour you a cup of coffee and serve it to you so long as you have a special machine that the cup right. that the robot can control so long as it's always the same cup of coffee and so long as you are sitting in the exact same spot as always <laughs> and it can just deposit it on a specific spot the ability for AI to simply parse out get me a cup of coffee and understand that, okay, this is, the, this is the kind of coffee he likes. I'm going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to look for something that I recognize as a coffee maker. Then I'm going to look on the shelves of something that I recognize as coffee. And then I'm going to find Andy and find, and basically make sure that I'm placing it some place, sort of place where That's he can actually get to it. That's the last thing that we're going to get, right? Because oh, of course, no. uh, it's, it's, it's it, you know, to, to talk to the physical world, which isn't going to change is your coffee machine is never going to be an AI that can respond to my, my AI. Uh, it might have a dedicated AI that understands the machine, but the machine is not going to change because it has to make physical world coffee. So I think that, you know, the digital world, the Internet, you know, searches all of that, the I, the phone screens and all that. Eventually, there'll be this transitional period where you have an AI that can talk to it. Eventually, it will be an AI. And then I think the last step in this will be robotics, will be the interaction between the physical world and the digital world. That's the hardest step, I think. That's why self-driving vehicles are so difficult. The real yeah. world has rocks <laughs> and other Right, obstacles. so AI could help with, with solving that messaging problem we were talking about exactly. before, too, because why couldn't I say, right. I want to send a message to Andy, Leo, Alex, and I want to use their favorite messaging platform, send a message that says, hi, Precisely. I'll be right there. Precisely. And that's why, by the way, self-driving vehicles, the biggest step is going to be vehicles, inter-vehicle communication, because that helps a lot, at least in terms of navigating vehicles. But the real world is a tough nut, and uh, AI is is probably going to be challenged by that in, for a I long think time. I think thinking about um, incremental changes, too, like, for instance, self-driving cars, what would really solve most of my problems is working on the highway. Like, I don't need you to figure out how to get to my house. <laughs> you know, I just need you to get... <laughs> I, I can I can do all of those things. Once I get on the highway, I don't want to, have to think about it again because that's boring. And and I think that we have to find ways. We're good that at that. Actually, we've already solved that pretty much, right? Um, for the most part, but you can make it a lot better. If you said we're not going to worry about the last mile, we're only going to worry about right. highways, and we invested in all the sensors and everything else that you would need um, in the highway to make the the cars even smarter, it would all that's work true. perfectly. Oh yeah, you know, and and and, and if we, but we've spent you know billions, possibly trillions of dollars on trying to get the last mile solved, which is the hardest part, the instead hardest of just part. investing right. in the exactly. highways. Like, exactly. you know, just like agree, that's 100%. The, what, yeah. so we're solving the wrong, like sometimes we're solving the wrong problem. They're like, no one will use it if they can't use it on the highway. Everybody would use it if they could get it on the highway right. and, and go do something else, you know, right. like it would, right. you know. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. If you enjoyed this little snippet of our programming, make sure you check out the full Mac Break Weekly. The link is right down there.